In the next part of our lecture, we're going to discuss uh, some modifications that we have to make to Lewis structures in order to make them work a little bit better. The first modification we're going to discuss is formal charges. Formal charges show where atoms might have an imbalance in the number of electrons in their valence shell compared to the number of po uh, sorry number of electrons in their valence shell plus their core compared to formal charges show where atoms might have an imbalance between the number of atom uh, number of electrons that they have in their valence shell and their core compared to the number of positive charges they have in their nucleus this gives us an idea of where electric, uh, electron density might be high or low in a molecule, which we're going to use later to predict reactivity. We technically need to calculate formal charges for every single atom in a given Lewis structure. However, fortunately for us, we're going to see in organic molecules, there are patterns for formal charges. And eventually, you'll begin to predict the formal charges without calculating them explicitly. Okay, so how do we calculate a formal charge? First thing we're going to do is we're going to have to have a complete Lewis structure. The Lewis structure is going to have to have all of the lone pairs, all of the multiple bonds, all of the unpaired electrons. It has to be totally complete. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at each atom individually. And we're going we're gonna to first determine how many valence electrons does this atom want to own? How many does it want to own? Now I'll explain what that means in just a minute. But what we're going to see is that an atom would like to have, for its very own, the same number of valence electrons that it started with when it was a neutral atom. So for example, we know that carbon starts with four valence electrons before it makes bonds. So a carbon atom would like to own four electrons at the end. Now, when we look at a Lewis structure then, we're going to see that because atoms are sharing electrons, they will have octets, but they won't really own all of the electrons in that octet. So, how do we determine how many uh, electrons an atom owns? Well, an atom owns two electrons for each of its lone pairs. When an atom is not sharing electrons, those electrons bon beyond, uh, sorry, belong completely to that atom. An atom owns one electron for each bond. Remember that a bond is two electrons shared between two atoms. So we make the assumption that the atoms share those electrons equally. Later on, we're going to see that's not always a great assumption. But essentially, if they share them equally, then each atom would own one of those two electrons. Now, a double bond counts as two bonds. A triple bond counts as three bonds. So basically, it has one electron for each line connected to it. And then we're going to see later that there are structures where atoms have an odd number of, elect or odd number of electrons, and they have one what we call unpaired electron, one electron by itself on a side. So using that rule, we have two times the number of lone pairs, one times the number of bonds, one times the number of unpaired electrons. And basically, you're going to usually just count this out very quickly by referring to the atom. We then calculate the formal charge. The formal charge is the difference between the number of electrons the atom wants, which we determine by saying how many valence electrons did it start with, minus the number of electrons the atom owns. Wants minus owns. We then write the formal charge in a circle next to the atom. Okay, now I need to emphasize that in organic chemistry when we write charges on atoms inside of a larger structure, we generally write those charges in a circle to indicate that they are a formal charge of the atom not the overall charge of the entire species. One of the things that we're going to see that's very interesting is that the overall charge on the structure will be the sum of all the formal charges on the individual atoms. 
This means that we can have structures that have formal charges inside, but the formal charges balance out and the overall structure is not an ion, it is not charged. That's also, this is also a really good way to check that you've calculated all your formal charges, since if you think you have a neutral atom and the formal charges add up to something non-zero, you probably have made a mistake. As I mentioned earlier, there are patterns for formal charges in organic molecules. The three most common atoms that we're going to work with are carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Actually, not in that order. Carbon and oxygen by far the, by far the most common, and then nitrogen. What we see then is that carbon would generally like to have four bonds. Nitrogen would like to have three bonds and one lone pair and oxygen would like to have two bonds and two lone pairs, this would, if we calculate out the formal charges, this would cause these atoms to be neutral, to have no formal charge. Why is that? Well, if we look at carbon, carbon wants four electrons, and in this case, getting one for each bond, it would have one, two, three, four. It would own four electrons, so wants four minus owns four, zero formal charge. We then have structures where the um, atoms have a positive one formal charge. For carbon, that structure is the incomplete octet form of carbon where it has only three bonds and then no lone pairs, just an empty space. We're gonna actually use this structure as, a, uh, as an important intermediate structure during reaction. So we're gonna come back and look at this structure later. Um, it's not stable enough usually to put into a bottle, but it does definitely exist during the course of an organic chemistry reaction. We're going to see that nitrogen can use that lone pair to make another bond. In that case, nitrogen would have four bonds. That would cause it to effectively only own four electrons when it wants five. So five minus four is a plus one charge. Similarly, we're going to see that oxygen can often use one of these pairs of electrons to make a bond. And so in that case then, the oxygen would only own five electrons. It wants to own six, so it would have a positive formal charge. We see this, you've already technically seen this in hydronium atom, H3O plus. If we had a hydrogen on each of these, then that would be the Lewis structure of hydronium. And we would see that the oxygen would have a positive formal charge and therefore the overall hydronium would have a positive ionic charge. We're also going to see negative charges, formal charges. Carbon has a negative formal charge when it has three bond and one lone pair. Nitrogen has a negative charge when it has two bonds and two lone pairs. We're not going to see these structures very often until later this semester and next semester. But this is a structure we see all the time, an oxygen with one bond and three lone pairs. And that is an oxygen that has a negative formal charge. Again, you've encountered this. You may or may not have realized this. If we put a hydrogen here, what we get is hydroxide negative ion. All right, so let's do an example of calculating formal charges. So this is the Lewis structure of HNO3. And I apologize, those aren't, that's not quotation mark. Those are uh, supposed to be lone pairs. So um, the black is the fully correct Lewis structure. You can go through and work out why this would be the case in the Lewis structure rules. We're going to come back and, and look at this structure again in a little bit. Um, in this case, then, what we can see is that hydrogen has one bond. A hydrogen with one bond will always have zero formal charge because hydrogen atom wants one electron. One bond will give it one electron. So you can almost always ignore hydrogens that are covalently bonded in a molecule. But we have to check all the rest of these. So let's start with this oxygen. Oxygen wants six electrons. This oxygen owns one, two, three, four for the two lone pairs, five, six, one for each of those bonds. So want six, own six. When we subtract those, we get zero. That means this oxygen has no formal charge. 
If we look at this oxygen, again, we have one, two, three, four for the two lone pairs. Two bonds gives it five, six, want six, own six, zero formal charge. This oxygen, however, is different. We can see that this oxygen wants six. It owns two for each lone pair. So two, four, six, plus one additional electron for that bond. That means it owns a total of seven electrons. Six minus seven is negative one. That oxygen has a negative one formal charge, which we put in a circle right here next to the atom. Finally, I'd like to show you this nitrogen. This nitrogen wants five. It owns one, two, three, four. So when we subtract four from five, five minus four, we get a positive one charge. This nitrogen has a positive formal charge. If we look at the overall structure then, we see that we have a positive formal charge on one atom, a negative formal charge on the other atom. So this structure is overall neutral. It's not an ion, even though there are charges inside the structure.